weeks, we've heard very different takes on the Croke Park Agreement from Labour and from Fine Gael. For instance, Labour's Joe Costello told us it was the most important social partnership deal ever. Fine Gael's Lucinda Creighton warned it's not sacred text and shouldn't be. Now, Pat Rabbit was talking about Clause 1.28 on Monday, and it's a key clause in the Croke Park Agreement. It says the implementation of Croke Park is subject to no currently unforeseen budgetary deterioration. What does that mean? Well, speaking on primetime last night, Kieran Mulvey, the man who brokered the deal, said he now believes it may be a good time for a mid-term review of Croke Park. Here's what he had to say. Logical and reasonable. That was Kieran Mulvey speaking to RTE's Robert Short in his primetime report last night. And with me here at Carton House, the Thonishta and Minister for Foreign Affairs, Eamon Gilmore. Thank you for joining us, Thonishta. Maybe you'd clear that up. Uh, is there going to be, is the government going to host a review of the Croke Park Agreement? Well, I think, first of all, we have to understand what this agreement is about. Uh, the government, the state, employs close on 300,000 people. They're the people who make sure that there's water in our tap when we get up in the morning, the people who maintain the roads that we drive on, that are there to meet our children and teach them in schools. The Whose guard, pay the, is now the guard, sacrosanct the, and protected No, it's not sacrosanct. Deal. Their pay, first of all, was cut. There's been significant cuts made in the pay of, uh, of these people who work for the state. And what the Croke Park Agreement is about is about saying to these people that the pay will not be cut further for a period of time, provided there is cooperation, first of all, with the reduction in the numbers who are employed, and secondly, with getting the work done. And over the period of this agreement, there has been a big drop in the numbers, about 18,000 in all, uh, who are out of the service now. There's a target to have about 27,000 out of the service entirely. The people who are left behind are asked and required to cooperate and to do the work of the people who are gone. And that's the sensible way. We're talking about reducing the but pay But the question bill. is whether there's going to be a review. The question is whether the pensions allowances and increments that are going on being paid while you're implementing savage cuts elsewhere, are they going to be on, on the table as part of this review? Can you answer that yes or no? Well, there is an, uh, there is an agreement and that agreement will be, will be kept, and as the Taoiseach said yesterday, and I concur with it, there is going to be no unilateral uh, withdrawing from this agreement by, by the government. Now, the, the Taoiseach question, said the question, yesterday the question, it was up to ministers to work the value of Croke Park, each of them out of their departments, but does that mean that they'll be able to sit down and talk about questions like pensions, no, allowances means, and increments? That what, needs a central meeting, doesn't what, it? What that, what that means is that the changes and the reforms and the getting of the work done um, should be done department by department, agency by, by agency. There is a, quite a considerable degree of flexibility in that agreement about co cooperation, about flexibility, about getting work done and about reducing the overall pay bill. So the will there be a review or not or is it up to Rory Quinn for instance to stop the payment of teachers increments? No, nobody is going to withdraw unilaterally from, from this agreement. Uh, Brendan Howland who is the minister directly responsible for dealing with this uh, is talking with the unions about it. That's an ongoing, an ongoing process. Uh, uh, the, uh, any agreement can be looked at uh, mid-term and how is it doing? Is it delivering what it's supposed to be doing. That's the sensible thing to do. And that is what we're doing. And it is delivering. It is delivering on reductions in the amount that we pay. It is also achieving the changes that we want to see achieved. And that is something that the government keeps under review all of the time. There's no issue of that there's a one-off so review of So you won't be doing this. what Kieran Mulvey suggested? This is what Kieran Mulvey suggested is going on all of the time. There's a constant review of this agreement to see if it is delivering what it is supposed to be delivering, to see if uh, the, we are making the savings, and we are. Are the, we achieving the reductions in the numbers of people, and we are. Are we achieving the changes that we want to see uh, in, in, the, in our public services? Yes, we are. Is there more that can be done on that front? There is, of course. Are there areas where perhaps we're not achieving the type of changes and reforms that we would like to see? Yes, there are, and we have more to do on that. Uh, 
Taoiseach said yesterday, Croke Park, not my deal. It was an interesting line. You were definitely agnostic when Croke Park was signed initially by the previous government. It took you a couple of months uh, to take up a definitive position on it. So why are you so wedded to it now? Is it simply because you're trying to protect the votes of the public servants who elected you? No, but this is the sensible way. We have two objectives here. One is to reduce the pay bill. The second is to achieve changes and reforms in our, in our public services. You're reducing the is, pay bill to a limited extent. I mean, you're getting rid of the numbers, but then the pensions are going back up and the public can't see, feel or touch no, much by way of reform or improved services, well, there's can a they? There's a total of £3.5 in, in pay reductions that is being achieved uh, by this agreement. There's a reduction in the number of people who are working uh, in the public services, up to uh, 27,000 in, uh, in all, and their work has to be... Uh, their work has to be covered. Now, what what you do with an agreement like this, you know, when you're trying to reduce pay, when you're trying to achieve change, you have to do it by cooperation. That is the sensible way in which to do it. The so idea, public the servants idea, have a veto. No, nobody has an veto. And the disabled this is, don't. They, they, this is not about a veto. This is about uh, an agreement. Uh, if you make an agreement, you keep the agreement, and there's a good reason for that. Because if you break an agreement, the people you make it with are unlikely to make it, are, are unlikely uh, to reach agreement with you again. And what we have to do is we have to keep our eye here on what is the objective. The objective is that we save money on the public service payroll. We're doing that. The objective is is that we get uh, more out of our public services for less, reduced numbers of, of people and a better quality public service. That is a big challenge. That is something that is very difficult to achieve and you won't achieve it by conflict. You won't achieve it by confrontation. You achieve it by cooperation. It's what any sensible employer would do. What you have to achieve, of course, in the December budget is another three and a half billion. And you said yesterday, Labour will not flinch uh, from the challenge that presents. Uh, the IMF, on the other hand, and you know the EU Commission, they clearly think that the government is flinching. It's not taking the toughest decisions on pay, on social welfare, on pensions, on college fees. Uh, so you are flinching already. No, that is not what they're saying. Uh, the Troika, which have reviewed the Irish programme, uh, have said that we are meeting our targets. In fact, we're ahead of uh, the target. The target for uh, this uh, uh, for last year was 10.4 percent. We committed about 9 percent. Taxing eight, child eight, benefit. Eight point, it's 8.6 percent uh, for this year. We have to get our deficit down. We cannot continue as a country uh, to be uh, borrowing seven out of every uh, three out of every ten um, uh, euros that we're that we're spending. Uh, so we have to get the deficit down, and we are determined to do that. We are already three quarters of the way through achieving what we have to achieve. What this government is about, what we were elected to do, the but job we were given. But you're not giving us a lot of specifics. For instance, universal universal benefits, the medical cards for, every, for all the pensioners, the child benefit for every parent. Is Labour wedded to those as an article of faith? I'm not going to discuss what are essentially uh, budgetary issues for, for December. Uh, those are issues that uh, decisions will be made on between now uh, and, and the budget. But what we have to Aren't achieve... Aren't the pu public entitled to know where you stand, though? Yes, and, uh, and we will make budget decisions in December when uh, the, the budget is being decided. What, what we were elected to do and what we are doing is to turn around this country's economy. It, we uh, came into government at a time of crisis uh, when the, the country's economy was in a mess, the country's reputation was in tatters. We have turned that around. We've restored the reputation. We have, we're now three quarters of the way through what has to be done in terms of getting the deficit down. Okay. Uh, and Let's we have returned the country's economy to growth. You've spoken of the importance of gay marriage. When are we going to see the legislation on that? Uh, what we've decided to do in relation to uh, gay marriage is to ask the constitutional convention uh, which is being established. So you're uh, kicking to it to touch? No, we're not kicking it to touch. We're establishing a constitutional convention. It's an innovative approach to looking at our constitution. It will be made up of one third of politicians, two thirds of uh, people drawn from the public to look at our constitution, to look at what constitutional changes we need into the period ahead. So and when do you want to see a result out and of the, that? And the issue marriage. of the issue of gay marriage is one of the issues that will be uh, addressed by the constitutional by convention. By 2016? No, uh, I, well before that. Okay. Uh, Abortion is that? We, and again, this is an issue that we've heard a lot of back and forth between uh, Labour and. Fine Gael people uh, over the summer and a huge divergence of opinion. Is it just going to prove too divisive with Fine Gael? You're going to have to find a reason not to deal with it, aren't you? Well, that's an issue that is, that is very sensitive and people have uh, very firm uh, views on it. 
Uh, there was, as you know, a ruling of the European Court of Human Rights. Uh, that ruling has to be um, addressed by the, by the government. There's an expert group that was established uh, to look at what is required to comply with that ruling. That expert group Those are all the facts. The politics are the agreement isn't there between the two parties. So doesn't that mean, in reality, you have so many problems, this is one you're going to have to park? No, that is not the case at all. I've told you that there's an you expert... You will deliver legislation. There is an expert group which will report, and when it, when it reports, we will address what is in the, the expert group. But there's no point in trying to anticipate uh, what recommendations they're going to make to us. But, you know, when they report, we'll address it. One thing we do know, of course, you're going to have to do uh, this autumn is the children's rights uh, referendum. Uh, nearly the middle of September, one and a half years in office, Francis Fitzgerald coming and talking to you today, but none of us have seen the wording. Yes, and you will see the wording. Uh, the Francis Fitzgerald uh, has done an outstanding job as Minister for Children and, and Youth Affairs. She's provided leadership in an area which has been neglected in this country for very long. So when will we see the wording? You will see the wording very, very soon. Uh, we have committed ourselves uh, to holding the referendum uh, this autumn. There is a timetable within which the wording has to be produced. There is fixed times within which the wording has to be produced before a referendum is held. We will comply with that uh, timetable and we will hold the referendum uh, this autumn. And Francis Fitzgerald, Minister for Children and Youth Affairs, will be here at our meeting today to brief us on what, it, what is happening. But she won't have the wording. We'll have to wait for that for a little while longer. Uh, one thing that's been quite clear at, at this Labour Party ga gathering is the, um, the homes and halls, the people dancing on the head of a pin to avoid expressing support for James Riley as Minister for Health. Um, is he on top of his brief, James Riley? Yes, he is. Uh, this and is you a have very absolute confidence in I have in confidence him. in him, yes. This is a very difficult... The, the health portfolio is a very difficult, uh, a very difficult portfolio. The health area is one that is in need of major reforms, and it is a reform uh, that this government is committed to doing, to bringing in a system of universal health insurance, to putting the priority on, on primary care, to getting changes in our hospital system and in the delivery of our, of our health uh, services. James Riley is uh, leading that... Effort. He has my support and he has the support of the entire government. What do you say to your three senators who aren't here, who are saying the optics of this kind of place is wrong, uh, you should be having the meeting in Leinster House in these austere, austere times and with what you're asking from the public? I think substance is more important than optics. I think what you have to, uh, I think they should look at what it is we're discussing here this week. Uh, we're discussing here uh, the issues that confront the people of this country, the job of work that our government has to do, which is to bring about economic recovery, uh, to get employment, uh, to get people back to work, to get the investment into this country uh, that James we need. James Connolly wasn't knocking around Carton House, was he? He was out on the streets. <laughs> James Connolly was focused on uh, the provision of employment and the provision of jobs, which is what the Labour Party is focused on doing. We need, we have a level of unemployment in this country that is far too high. We need to get employment uh, in order to get people back to work. That's what our job of economic recovery is about. That's what we're talking about here this weekend. We were given a job of work to do by the Irish people. We are continuing with that job. We're going to complete and the job to do that and job. we are going to succeed in, in turning our country job. around. In doing that job. Is foreign affairs the wrong posting for you? Do you risk making the same mistake that Dick Spring made back in the 90s? Foreign affairs is the, ver is the very right posting because there isn't a country in the world that is more dependent on the outside world than, than Ireland. We export 80% of everything we produce. We're dependent on foreign direct investment. Uh, we're dependent on having a relationship with institutions like the ECB and the European, uh, the European Union. What we have to do is we do it abroad. The deal we have to secure, for example, in separating the bank debt deal, the European Union presidency next year, the inter our international work as a country is at the heart of our economic recovery and th that's why I'm the Minister for Foreign Affairs. All right, uh, Thánaiste and Minister for Foreign Affairs, Eamon Gilmore, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us.